today I've come to visit some of the little bays around San Francisco. So let's go for a little explore and see what we can find. So the first thing we've got here is a big flock of Canada geese. I'm sure we're going to see some beautiful wildlife today, as well as perhaps finding a few bits and pieces. We get a lot of these in London as well. There's often flocks of them congregating on Black Heath. So nice just sitting here listening to the water lap up on the shore. There's a little tiny island over there, full of birds. Let's take a little look. Looks like there's gulls, egrets, little waders, seagulls. Start at the end there. A group of waders. Now I don't know which waders, but some of you may know. Have a look at these egrets. They're so resplendent, aren't they? Got like a lone wader here. And there's the gull section. Lovely little bird island. And I'm just sitting here listening to this very relaxing sound of the water lapping up in this little beach. Oh, there's lots and lots of broken glass here, so this is good news. I think I'll collect enough to make a little fish on the shoreline. Ah, oh, here we are. Registered US Clorox. I shall look up that. Here's a bottle here, which is quite nice. Very similar to the ones we find back near London with the measurements on. This one's a bit broken. And it's quite nice to find bits of glass with American names on, you know, companies, uh, American companies that I can perhaps look up, or I'm assuming they're American anyway. There's Abbott and Co here. And um, this one's got Ohio on it. Makes a nice change. Now here's the bottom of the bottle, and I can see that it's got Los Angeles on it. So it's got, let's have a look, Los Angeles, Cali, or California, um, and then it's got WJ Latchford Co. Los Angeles. So it's always fun to see what you can find out just from a broken fragment. And this is nice for me because of course, usually the bottles and the glass that I find in England, they're more sort of UK related. Well, apart from Californian fig syrup, of course, we seem to find a lot of that, but 
W.J. Latchford Company, Los Angeles. Now I'm in a national park and so you don't take anything away from here. So it's fun just to look at the fragments and then just put them back. I think I've spotted a nice bottle stopper down here. Ooh, also what looks like some, maybe some newspaper or something. Let's have a look. But anyway, look, there's a bottle stopper here just poking out from under this rock. Let's pull it out. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? I wonder if it's got anything on it. No, it hasn't. Let's give it a little rinse, hold it up to the light. Isn't it pretty? It's gorgeous. Like sweets, aren't they? Part of a belt or a, a little buckle or something or a catch. button just here all the waders are having a little bath splashing around there driftwood heaven down here as well. It sort of reminds me of Cliff out in Kent. All this driftwood just sitting here. Just something really alluring about driftwood. I just love it.
Hi everyone, today I've come to China Camp. I was here a few days ago. Um, it's on the San Pablo Bay near San Rafael and it's near the site of a really historic shrimp fishing village, a Chinese-American shrimp fishing village that was really thriving in the late 19th century. And so it's low tide here as well, so I'm having a look to see um, if there's any sort of evidence in the mud at low tide of what used to go on around here at China Camp. And look, there's lots of bits of pottery here. And I'm sure that these are probably remnants from when this was a really thriving community. Let's see if there's anything else to find. A nice piece of pottery here, look. And this is quite fascinating. Looks like the remnant of a basket or something that you can see coming out of the mud. It sort of reminds me of the Thames mud, really. Really, really interesting. Bits of bone as well. Oh, that's a tooth, I think. Yeah, an old tooth. Yeah, it's very Thames-like. And here in the mud you can even see sort of remnants of old bits of rope there. Still preserved in the mud. Now I've just found something exciting here. I've just pulled this out. It's a really old, well it looks like a really old domino piece. Look at that. I think it's dominoes, I don't know. Yeah, definitely looks like it. And guess what? I found plenty of pottery that definitely looks like it's got some kind of, sort of Chinese design on it. I've just put a little pile over here. Just look at this. It's lovely, isn't it? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put it in the little museum area. Now here there's even a tiny bottle, look. A little tiny bottle. Probably from the early 1900s, I should think. Now look, there's a lovely chunk down here, and it's quite big actually. Let's have a look at this. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Now I also just found a little coin, um, but it's quite worn. So I can't immediately tell what it is. Now, what's this? It's something that's not pottery. And I can see it's got some lettering on it as well. It's kind of exciting, isn't it? Look at that. I wonder what this is. I shall have to give it a little rinse. Let's find some water over here. Give it a little rinse off. Hmm, that's cool. Patented August the 17th, 1875. Whatever it is. Well, here I am in California and I can just tell you now that I have found my first piece of clay pipe stem. Isn't that incredible? I kid you not. There it is. 
a piece of clay pipe stem. Result! But I think the prize piece has got to be this uh, Chinese domino here. That is definitely the star find. This coin, which unfortunately I can't see what it is. This is interesting, whatever it was, um, or part of something anyway, that was patented August 17th, 1875. And this star find here, piece of pipe stem, marked with Glasgow on that side and uh, MacDougall on that side and it's going to be interesting finding a little bit more out about MacDougall who made this clay pipe and then exported it to the USA back in the 19th century. So I'm going to pack up these bits now and take a little walk down to the museum. Well, this is the little museum down at China Camp. It's got lots of little placards detailing the history of the place. So I've just put my pottery down here. And guess what, here we are, back on the River Thames in London. And here is a MacDougall clay pipe stem. So we're right back where we started. MacDougall, Glasgow. Hi everyone, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're well and welcome to my studio. I'm now back in London. And that footage was taken, gosh, when was it taken? Back in January 2020, when we were all still able to travel. And I don't know about you, but I'm really missing being able to travel and explore different areas. And so looking through that footage again, it was really nice. It brought back some lovely memories. And I found so much more than I was expecting to find, I have to say. And... Uh, I was particularly excited, in fact I don't think I've ever been quite so excited to find a clay pipe stem because I've got to be honest it was the last thing I was expecting to find. I find a lot of them on the River Thames but I just wasn't expecting to see one sitting there at China Camp and so it really made my day. And this is a good time to just say how underrated clay pipe stems are because actually they really do have the potential to unlock so much history and tell so many stories and we can find out so much 
about a clay pipe just by looking at the stem, whether it's got a maker on it or not. And I've got a whole box of stems here and one of these days I'm going to do a video all about my clay pipe stems and uh, that will be one to look out for because no one will be able to say that a clay pipe stem is boring after you'll have seen that video because this box is just full of fragments of pipe with names on of makers, addresses where they were made, dates when they were made, um, beautiful designs, little prints on the on the heels and I've got one here with a little bit of wax on the stem and of course which is where by the way um, it would have helped the wax helped the clay not to stick to the lips of the person who was smoking it and that's the thing about clay pipes and clay pipe stems I mean they're really personal bits of history because uh, generally the person who held it before the person who finds it in the mud or, or wherever is the person who smoked it sometimes several hundred years earlier and so they really are special bits of history so um, never underestimate the uh, the potential of a clay pipe stem of just how much history it can it can tell us and so there we are i hope i've managed to convince you about how important clay pipe stems are and now we'll just have a quick chat about the one that I found in China camp. Now um, at first I didn't realise that it had a maker on it and when I realised a few hours later I was actually um, absolutely thrilled. Uh, this isn't it by the way because I left the original there but I'm just holding it um, as a replacement pretending that it's the one I found. Um, now the one I found was marked with McDougall and Glasgow and so of course that meant that I had something to look up so I looked up McDougall's and they are a, a pipe company which um, started in 1847 McDougall's were manufacturing clay pipes in Glasgow from 1847 and in fact they they didn't end manufacturing clay pipes until 1967 and so they actually went on for a very long time but um, McDougall's, they used to export a lot of clay pipes to the US. And it was Duncan McDougall who ran the company. And um, the fact that it has Glasgow written on it means that the clay pipe dates between 1847 and 1891. Now, how do we know that? Well, we know that because in 1891, a law was brought in in the US, which meant that anything imported into the US, um, in particular clay pipes, for example, they had to have their country of origin stamped on the side. And so they were no longer able to put just Glasgow on it. It had to be McDougall, Scotland. So if you're in the US and you find a clay pipe with McDougall's on it and it has Glasgow, you know that it's pre-1891 and if it's got Scotland, it's after 1891. So, um, so there you have it, you see, we've already been able to sort of see that the pipe dates between 1847 and 1891 and I'm going to hazard a guess and say mm, that it probably dates to around about 1870, which would fit perfectly with when China camp was a really busy place full of people working and fishing and presumably also people sitting down and having a little puff on a clay pipe. And so there you are. Um, it was very, very exciting to, to find it. And it was also fun a few months later to find a clay pipe stem with McDougall and Glasgow on it again in the River Thames um, and to be honest it's that, that that made me think oh I must do a video uh, and sort of make that connection so it just goes to show that uh, it's not just necessarily in the River Thames where one can find clay pipe stems so uh, just in case you did think that which I'm sure you don't because we all know of course that people do find clay pipes and clay pipe stems in the US not just in the UK but like I said uh, I just wasn't expecting it so it was a really lovely surprise. 
So, now that I've given you all a lecture about clay pipe stems, I'm sure you've heard more than you want to hear about them, um, I'll leave it there until my uh, clay pipe stem video special, which should be coming out, uh, well, I don't know, sometime over the next eight months or so. One to look out for, I have to say. So that's about it, really. I think that the other finds on the video spoke for themselves, really. And um, yeah, I'll just say again what a, what a lovely time I had and how fun it was to explore somewhere different from the Thames to make a change and how much I absolutely loved seeing all that beautiful wildlife. But next week I'll be back on the Thames, maybe not physically, but my video will be um, featuring the River Thames again. So uh, we'll be back down in that full on Thames mud. So, um, thank you very much again for watching and thank you for your comments and feedback and, and encouragement, your ideas and emails and suggestions. I appreciate um, every comment that I get and if you enjoy my videos then please do subscribe and take care of yourselves, stay safe. I hope that you have an excellent week ahead and I very much look forward to seeing you again very soon for more scintillating history about clay pipes, clay pipe stems and goodness knows what else. Um, so until then, take care. Bye bye.